I am very excited to pass it over to our solutions consultant, Maria Latt, who will be sharing the best tips, tricks, and practices to increase candidate engagement, open rates, and reply rates. As a reminder, please share your questions in the chat and our customer success team will be able to respond. Over to you, Maria. All right, thanks so much, Marissa, and hello, everyone. Excited to be here with you all. As Marissa mentioned, my name is Maria, and I'll be covering how to level up your candidate outreach. In this session, you'll learn best practices on candidate outreach, as well as how to measure that outreach success. After this session, we'll help you answer questions like, how can I increase my conversion rates? How are my messages resonating with candidates? How are my different messagings uh, responding into different markets and different candidate pipelines? But before we dive in, did want to share a few statistics with you all. First off, did you know that source candidates are hired at more than twice the rate in which inbound applicants are hired? And that 85% of all talent, both active and passive, are open to hearing about new job opportunities. While open to hearing about new job opportunities, 90% of candidates prefer to be contacted via email rather than phone or in-mail. However, the average prospect today receives 121 emails a day indicating the necessity to cut through the noise. Knowing the importance of sourcing candidates and how it's imperative to find ways to do that, I'll share eight tips on how to improve your candidate outreach. As I go through each one of these tips, I'll walk you through how GEM can help you do that. So let me jump into the platform here. Tip number one, send follow-up emails. Follow-ups are exponentially important when it comes to increasing your response and interested rates. Data from over 5 million outreach campaigns shows that prospects respond to recruiter emails at the following rates. For the first one, 14%, second email, 24%, third email, 29%, and the fourth one, 32%. With GEM sequences, you're able to automatically follow up with candidates if they don't respond. So the best practice here is to use a four-stage sequence, which, which strikes the right balance between connecting with candidates and preserving employer brand. So this is one I've already created, but let's actually go, on, go ahead and create one from scratch. So within here, I'm going to name this Maria's sequence. And as that best practice, we are going to make this a four-stage sequence. Now, the second tip is to space out your sequences. So in recent years, sourcers and recruiters have recognized the importance of giving passive talent a little bit more breathing room to consider the opportunity. Our data shows that a median number of days between messages strikes the right balance of, again, uh, preserving your employer brand and engaging with candidates. And the best balance is a 566 six space out. So here, I'm actually going to change this to five days. So this one will send in five days if the candidate doesn't respond to that first one. This third stage will be six. And this last one will be six as well. So following that 566 six format. And a 566 cadence leads to an email delivery that is on a different day of the week as well. So we're catching them on different days. So one will be Monday, one will be on a Wednesday, and so on and so forth. So the best practice here is just to keep yourself top of mind over the long term. It's worth noting that if you do want to send a sequence that's more or set up a sequence that's more than four stages, most of our customers that do have a fifth stage wait at least a month or around a month to send out this last one. And so consider that last one being um, a little bit longer. And this gives, again, candidates more breathing room and allows them to really think about the opportunity as they think about making major career changes. The third tip is to personalize your subject line. So naturally, there's a direct correlation between subject lines and open rates. Personalized subject lines actually increase open rates by nearly 15%. Prospects leave so much information out there. It's very easy to do your research ahead of time, your due diligence. So consider a subject line that's super personal, and I'm gonna actually use the tokens that Gem provides. So let's say maybe first name, maybe their title at the current company they're at, and let's say awesome background. 
Now, that's just one example. Consider the other opportunities, though, to make this personalized, such as appealing to values. So think about the problems your company is trying to solve. Another one is to appeal to curiosity. Curiosity is one of the most influential drivers of human behavior. So it's definitely worth considering maybe having a question in your subject line. So maybe instead of awesome background, I can do what's next. And also consider using powerful verbs such as build, define, disrupt, invent. Things like that are among one of the most compelling verbs that talent teams use today. Awesome. So that leads to our fourth tip. So that's considering different send times. So when you are sending out a message, know that candidates are getting 120 plus emails a day. So you definitely want to get their attention. And it means getting to candidates when they're at their emails and considering getting to the top of their emails. So a fun fact here is more than 50% of prospects open emails within the first hour and a half of receiving it. And, um, that, those send times are really going to differ between roles, and you're definitely going to have to test through um, based on your roles, based on the markets that you're targeting. But until then, we have discovered here at GEM that a Sunday outreach, particularly between the hours of 8 p.m. and 10 p.m., so I'm going to actually change this to Sunday at 8 p.m., actually get a pretty good response rate and open rate. So um, I have my first outreach going out at that time. And just know that this, is, this does surprisingly well if you haven't done um, necessarily any research on what works well for your, your company. This window actually finds an open rate of around 80%. Um, again, recommend testing this internally at, um, at your companies to see if that resonates as well. So the fifth tip is to keep your message short. A study of in-mail data from recruiters at San in San Francisco concluded that the shorter the message, the higher the response rate. And also there's mobile to consider, right? A lot of candidates are opening these emails on their phones and an iPhone will only show about 120 words at a time. And that's even with some breaks between, period, between paragraphs. So the best practice is to keep your messages to, to 200 words or less. Break up the words in shorter blocks, have three to four paragraphs. From a UI and UX perspective, this is much easier on the eyes as well. So let's say, for example, in this message, going to keep it really short and sweet. And as you can see here, um, looking really easy on the eyes. And from here, I'll be able to send this right to the candidate. All right, so tip number six is to personalize your message. So we did a study of nearly 8,000 recruiting emails that shows that highly personalized messages outperformed those that were somewhat personalized or impersonal in their outreach. Our GEM data shows that highly personalized outreach delivers the best ROI, increasing response rates by, around, um, by almost 30%. So recruiters and sourcers who send those one-off emails or use full outreach campaigns that use reason tokens, which I'll walk through what that is in a second, see an average reply rate of 44%. And so you're probably thinking, okay, how do I go and use that reason token? When you're on LinkedIn and utilizing GEM within the sidebar, the extension, we have this reason here, and this allows me as a recruiter or sourcer to highly personalize this outreach without having to remember to do that later. So I'm on this candidate's profile. Let's say the reason why I'm reaching out is because we did a brainstorming session of great engineers and Salisha's name came up. So that reason token will help me later down the line as I'm sending emails, that exact reason will pull right here into the communication. Awesome. All right, so tip number seven is to include others in the outreach process. For some roles, particularly with those hard to fill roles, highly technical roles, having another voice in the outreach process will significantly increase your chances of getting the candidate's attention and ultimately receiving a reply. With GEM, you can easily leverage your hiring managers, your VPs, even your CEO, which I will do in this case, to help increase that engagement. 
In fact, one of our customers actually sees open rates of 90%, reply rates of 50%, and conversion rates of over 30% when the send on behalf of feature is used. So as I mentioned, I'm going to use Steve here because we're always looking for amazing engineers. Let's say I'm going to put this as, hey, from Steve at GEM. And then as we uh, mentioned earlier, want to keep this as a short and sweet note but highly personalized. So here we're gonna pull in the candidate's name and another best practice, right, is having some paragraphs. What's really cool about this is because we're able to um, pull in Steve here, his, his uh, Gmail signature, email signature will pull right in. So it's really gonna look like it's coming from Steve, the CEO at GEM. Awesome. So tip number eight, Include your company values and benefits. What candidate's value looks so different than what it looked like in the past? In-person social events, gym memberships, magnificent office views, no, really, no, no longer apply really when you think about the events that have happened in the last year or so. So my recommendation here is to consider your employee value proposition. Um, it's changing with our, um, with our talent's priorities, so we need to ensure that that we're aligning really well there. So an example that I'm gonna to add to this first outreach is gonna look something like this. So we have really great perks, so on and so forth. So in terms of you know, what, has, um, what has been most of a priority for many of our um, candidates has been the employee well-being, stability in their career, social corporate responsibility, diversity inclusion, things like that you definitely want to uh, highlight and showcase within your communications. So those are the eight tips on how to level up your candidate outreach to increase candidate conversions. Now let's take a look at how you can actually use this to measure um, your outreach success. So I'm actually heading over to outreach stats here to give me that top of funnel view of metrics, activity across the team. And within this view, I can see a lot of things. I can see one, how many outreaches have we sent each month? How many have been open and reply? But one of the ways that our customers like to slice and dice this data is by sequence. So by grouping this by sequence, I can compare and contrast the open and reply rates as well as interested rates of each one. So notice that all the sequences here that have SOBO or send on behalf of have a open and reply rate that are pretty high at 90%, I wanna say this one's 87 and 84. So that's pretty good in terms of open, reply and interested rates. Um, well, what we need to consider too is how many of those candidates actually convert. So if we actually take this first one, for example, this uh, Sobo or send on behalf of from Emil, who is our VP of engineering, most of our candidates that have replied also have converted to interested. So that's the kind of data that's super powerful to understand, knowing that we're always looking for great engineers. This tells me that we need to continue using this sequence for our engineering push. Now let's take a look at data in a different way. Let's go ahead and take a look at location. So here I can actually see how our communications are resonating with different markets. At a first glance, right, we're targeting Seattle and San Francisco, but interestingly enough, if I actually look at the different cities that we're targeting, Chicago, DC, and Austin are um, are pretty up there in terms of open rates. And what's interesting to note there is that their reply and interested rates uh, follow suit with um, their interested in reply rates being pretty high as well. Something that I'm also seeing is that even though we don't have a ton of outbound outreach going out to candidates in the Los Angeles market, we actually are seeing a good number of those interested. And what's cool about GEM is that all of this information is actionable, so I can actually see who those candidates are and perhaps nurture, track, and engage them throughout the recruiting process to convert them into those qualified um, and active applicants and ultimately leading to those hires. So now that I went through that data there, hopefully that gives you a really good understanding of how to utilize GEM in understanding your own team's outreach success. 
Something to consider here is, um, you know, understanding what works really well for your organization might work a little differently at others. So doing the A-B testing and understanding um, across the team what works really well will be really important. So in summary, the eight tips to improve candidate outreach. Tip number one, send follow-ups. Tip number two, space out your sequences. Tip number three, personalize your subject lines. Four, consider those send times. Five, keep your message length short. Tip number six, personalize your message. Seven, include hiring managers or VPs, or in the case that I went through, your CEO in the outreach process. And tip number eight, include company values and benefits. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, please visit the expo hall after our training session today. Our customer success team will be available to answer any questions you may have and do some product walkthroughs with you.